Hello everyone. This will be a video to cover up a guide that I've made related to vSync and its actual use, debunking lies and misinformation that is spread around. During the video, you will see me cycle in between 30, 60, and 120 FPS with the in-game FPS underscore max and RTSS frame rate limit, showing how the engine frame rate cap is not as efficient or consistent as compared to RTSS. It will also be showcasing vSync and how it deals with screen tearing, comparing mouse lag in between sequences. For those who wonder why my frame rate caps at 67 FPS during vSync sequences, that is because my refresh rate is raised to 67 Hz from 60 Hz. To begin with, we all know that high frame rates are a nice thing to have. There is no questioning that. How even, even with today's newest graphics cards, there are only a few games that are able to be played at the highest refresh rates consistently. It's also by hard fact a lot of people really don't know what they are talking about when it comes to said technology and very often spread misinformation that the majority takes for granted. That's okay, the thought that commonly found a lot of it is wrong, not researched and not tested to prove the accuracy of the facts. We know a lot of it comes to preference, but is there an actual sweet spot when it comes to game performance? Most people ask around and could get several answers, but one of these is sure that we will never hear use vertical synchronization. Don't get me wrong, vSync as it's stated alone is pretty awful, even for myself, I would come to despise its use. However, for years now, I've been using vSync in a fashion that nobody would ever come to think of, at least the majority. This has been found out but often denied as a proper alternative, while companies are pushing out technology that in theory should address these issues, but don't. So why bother, you may ask? It's fairly simple. As much as anyone will try to deny it, the hard facts are here. Hear me out. A lot of people dislike tearing, as much as I do as well. But it's sickening to have people making up their mind to things that are as bare and not concrete to actual real results. Input lag or said mouse lag is an issue. It is. But before going into the details, I will be using one of the games that people praise the most with its high frame rates, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. To start off, I'm sorry if you feel it, but your understanding of how many FPS anyone would need is plain wrong. Look, I enjoy your videos quite a lot, but whenever it comes to FPS, all of the videos that you've made could be interesting in some standpoint of seeing map performance, otherwise the total map FPS is completely worthless. That you come completely blunt and say, don't hark with this, is bullshit. Most likely because you haven't tested any of those methods, or perhaps you don't want people to know about it, whichever. First off, there is no such thing as frame latency, it's called frame time. Frame time is the amount it takes to draw a frame to the screen. Which in perspective, this is tied to your GPU operation called max pre-render frame rates for NVIDIA or FlipSide Q for AMD. NVIDIA's default pre-rendered frames in most cases is 3. This amount means that 3 frames will be rendered at the same time, putting more load on the GPU because it has to predict 3 frames ahead. The reason why putting this setting to 1 boost FPS is because the GPU doesn't have to predict as many frames. While at it, AMD pre-renders frames are now always locked to 1, even using Radeon Pro doesn't allow you to change this value, you'd have to do some serious digging into the registry to change it. Either way, for both sides, having more than one pre-rendered frame in the background is useless, can hurt performance, including vSync. There is no reason to have more than one pre-rendered frame, at least in testing, there hasn't been any benefits that I could find, point that out to me if any. When looking around, we often get reviewers or even companies putting out some gimmicky solutions or said things that aren't understood in practice to begin with. Okay, so to explain how and why I made this video, yes, frames are picking the earliest, but because you have more frame rendering doesn't mean the game display even more recent information. That's a bullshit claim. If you play on 60 hertz, only the first 60 frames will be picked. The rest will just happen to be a smeared mess of tearing all across the screen, thus making tearing visible in tiny amounts as frame builds up. But this is not a good solution, and in practice, playing with uncapped frame rate is never stable, making frame rate drop very likely invisible, thus smearing tearing all across the screen and possibly can make your input less consistent. As you can see in the top left corner of the video, this is RTSS, known as Riva Turner Statistics Servers. You can see most of the things they are displayed are how my computer performs. Pretty straightforward. If you closely take a look, you can see that we have frame rate on the top left and frame time on the top right. Those are essentially what you will need to pay attention right now. As you can see, I am mostly fixing around corners and seeing how tearing behaves. The higher the frame rate, the less noticeable. However, the higher the frame rate, the more tearing there will be in small amounts compared lower amount of frames. 
during the testing, the only thing that could bother the input of my mouse was 30 FPS or letting this thing loose. Playing at 30 FPS is not a bad thing if you cannot afford better than that, and that's known. It would be better for you to play at 30 FPS if you can't go higher than 60 FPS. That way you'll have a consistent gameplay and not have to be bothered with the game getting smoother in random occasions just as dust to tunnels. Combining the fact that at 30 FPS you can use VSync because it's still under your refresh rate, you will have no issues whatsoever and the game will look smooth, pretty much as smooth as you're used to. And no, playing with VSync at lower frames does not cause any stutter. This is the illusion of having very few amount of frames per second. You could be playing at 10 FPS, for example, uncapped for VSync, it wouldn't matter. The game is just unplayable because there's not enough frames to begin with. But I hear you say VSync holds the action back, or whatever excuses. Well, it doesn't. VSync and practice never did. It never, it never, 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 never held back the action. It only syncs the frame rate. That, that, is, that is the purpose of VSync, period. Nothing else. The idea that VSync holds the action back is because VSync uses buffers before displaying the frame. Usually, you can avoid these by just using the front buffer when you only use one pre-rendered frames. It's pretty useful, and this is pretty much what solves the issue with mouse lag to begin with. However, if you were to have more frames that the refresh rate can in practice display, it would just introduce lag and then delay the action. However, if you do not have these pre-rendered frames set in the background, it will not be an issue. However, even if you have free pre-rendered frames, it's possible to avoid input lag by simply capping your frame rate three frames below because you have three pre-rendered frames in the foreground. That way you'll avoid them being in the background, causing this horrible lag. If not done this way, you will have the pre-rendered frames set in ahead of your refresh rate, which will introduce this lag. No matter how uncapped frame rates looks better, this is just an illusion because you don't see tearing as much. If you were to play at 59 cap FPS with VSync, you would absolutely feel no difference in between the both because tearing will not be as noticeable. But the fact that you play at a lower frame rate with the same result will mean that your input will be a lot more consistent and stable to begin with. And no, sacrificing frames such as instead of having 64 frames or 64 ticks will not hurt your performance at all. As long as you can render frames, you will be able to play and registry will not be affected whatsoever. Ping is a lot worse of an issue for this. Otherwise, how do you expect people with Potato PCs to be able to play? It's a good question, but logically, this is what makes sense. In the end, yes, it is better to get a high refresh rate monitor only if your game can withstand and provide the frames that it needs consistently. Otherwise, you will just experience a smooth gameplay and then a decrease and then an increase and then an increase. It won't be as fun as you may think it will be. Then again, 60 hertz in my experience with VSync and no input lag looks just as smooth as 120. 120 does look smoother, yeah, but only to a smaller extent. I can tell it. It's 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 quite the opinion, but I can assure you, it's a lot better to play without tearing than having tearing and thinking that having more frames helps your performance, because it doesn't and it's by fact. And to answer the questions, I will be leaving my guide, however, as the most important. Is it worth to get 120 hertz or even 144? Yes, it is, as long as your computer can handle it. And I bet you that this will be a formidable experience if you can use VSync without input lag and have a consistent amount of frames. However, the reason why playing at higher refresh rates is uh, or as should I say, feels better is because it's smoother, yeah, but at the same time, the screen refreshes so fast, you can barely notice it. You can barely notice the tearing around corners of geometry or whatever, whatever you can make come across, a box, a corner. It's not as noticeable, but it's still there. And it's why it will be worthwhile to just, instead of having your frames uncapped, to just cap it at 144 not 124, 144, and 
that way, when you cap it, your GPU will adjust its load accordingly to how much power it needs to render what's on the screen. That way, instead of dropping frames from, uh, say, uh, 244 to 150 in a millisecond by accident because there's been one explosion there or there's a lot of stuff going around there, it will just be consistent and stable input no matter what. Considering also that doing this saves a lot of CPU power, people with bad computers don't know, but they, they are able to stream and record. They just have to set their cores performance accordingly, and saving spare CPU power like that will allow you to do that. Also, the fact that your computer will not always be a space eater when you're trying to just play a good game in a hot day. Nonetheless, remember that Despite what I say, if you want to have vSync consistently with no input lag, you it's a must that you cap the frame rate one frame below the refresh rate because that one frame that is pre-rendered otherwise will introduce this input lag. And for NVIDIA users, it's important that you, even if you don't use the technique, you need to put your pre-rendered frames to one. That way you'll afford better performance, believe me. So that wraps it up. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's not the most detailed, the most professional. I just really wanted to make this as a word out because I'm really tired and sick of hearing these people telling me that I'm calling bullshit when the average of you no, know, pretty much everyone that I recommended this trick just end up being really happy knowing it because they didn't know in the first place. And for a fact that it's quite, 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 quite quite bad that people spend out a lot of money for monitors such as G-Sync or FreeSync and they they just don't get what they paid for. Period. It's it's sad. Anyways, check out the guide in the description for more details because I know this video won't wrap it up entirely compared to the text that I wrote down there. See y'all.